Hello, I'm Dr. Deepak Bhatt, Editor-in-Chief of the Harvard Heart Letter at Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. We are going to be talking about cholesterol today. LDL cholesterol is sometimes known as the bad cholesterol, while HDL cholesterol is sometimes referred to as the good cholesterol because it scavenges bad cholesterol from the bloodstream. In general, it's been shown that approaches, diet, exercise, medicines that lower the bad cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, then translate into reductions in heart attack and stroke. This is best achieved by a healthy diet, such as a diet low in saturated and trans fat, and also by exercise. However, sometimes that's not enough to lower very high LDL cholesterol levels, especially in people that are at high cardiovascular risk. Joining me today is Dr. Chris Cannon, who was the lead investigator of the Improve It trial, and Dr. John Jarko, an editor at the New England Journal of Medicine, who wrote an editorial for a very important article that Dr. Cannon just published. Dr. Cannon, perhaps you could summarize that study, the Improve It trial, for us. Sure. As you've said, uh, lowering the LDL cholesterol has been one of the big advances. And most of the studies have used statin medications. And a question had been, do other medicines that are not statins uh, that lower cholesterol, will those also prevent heart attacks and strokes? And so that was the key question. We also studied high-risk patients who had just had a heart attack and asked, how low should we get their cholesterol? where the standard is around 70 milligrams per deciliter for the bad cholesterol, and we pushed that down to around 55. And so those were the two questions that we set out to look at in a very large trial, uh, 18,000 patients, an average of six years of, of treatment. And fortunately, we found the answer was yes to both of those questions, that we used a drug called azetamide that blocks absorption of cholesterol into the body and can further lower the cholesterol that way. And we found that that did, in fact, reduce more heart attacks and strokes than just a statin alone. Sure, so two important messages, that lower is better as far as LDL cholesterol goes, and that you can do it with something in addition to a statin, in this case the drug azetamide, and it still provided benefit. So Dr. Jarko, you wrote the accompanying editorial. What do you think of this study? What's its impact? to patients who've had heart attacks, but also to people who have a high cholesterol level. Sure. Well, as you've just said, the most important conclusion from this study is that lower is better, uh, and specifically that lower LDL cholesterol is better. Now, that might not sound like a new message. After all, you just indicated that LDL cholesterol is the bad cholesterol and that we want that to be lower. But there has, in fact, been a controversy uh, in the field among experts about how you get the LDL cholesterol down. A lot of the studies seem to show that statin drugs like simvastatin, atorvastatin, rosuvastatin had a unique property of ability to lower the cholesterol uh, and simultaneously to lower the risk of cardiovascular events that somehow wasn't shared or at least not shared to the same degree by other cholesterol-lowering medications. And so firmly fixed was this idea in the minds of the experts that the recently published guidelines uh, in the treatment of cholesterol heavily emphasized the statin drugs, almost to the exclusion of other classes of drugs. What's exciting about the Improve It trial is that it demonstrates clearly that an entirely different kind of drug, the azetamide, that works by a totally different mechanism than the statins, also lowers cardiovascular events as a result of lowering LDL cholesterol. And this opens up the field of lipid lowering management by suggesting that we need not rely only on a single class of medications. And for patients, what's important about this is that some patients can't tolerate statins, right. so they may not be able to benefit from statin therapy. Other patients may be able to tolerate statins, but they may not get the expected degree of cholesterol lowering from those drugs. And for people in these categories, and they aren't rare, other medications uh, need to be tried. And it's 
very, very helpful to them to know that yes, you can achieve the same benefits with other classes of drugs. Speaking of other drugs, just relatively recently, the PCSK9 inhibitors, a new injectable way of lowering cholesterol, were discussed in an FDA advisory panel, and the members voting in general voted favorably for this class of compounds. Uh, some of this work has actually been published already in the New England Journal of Medicine with respect to these drugs having a very potent ability to reduce cholesterol by about 50% or so, and some tantalizing early signals that that might even be translating into reductions in heart attack risk. What do you think? Is this something that is going to be part of the future as far as cardiovascular risk reduction? It is very exciting, and I think the field is now moving beyond this nicely said, just one class, the statins, to re-looking at lowering cholesterol. Many patients will do fine with just one drug and not need two or three, but to have these other therapies that can really get the cholesterol down means that we can impact this really very broadly. For the moment, these have been focused on patients with heart disease, and so at very high risk. Some people with familial hypercholesterolemia have sky-high cholesterols, and we're all very eager to have this new class to add to the others. So I think it's a very bright time in the field of lowering cholesterol with lots of different therapies that seem to work very well. And Dr. Jarko, what do you think of this additional new class of compounds that very likely will be introduced into patient care in the near term? Sure. I think that these studies of the PCSK9 inhibitors are very important. And as Chris has said, they do seem to convey a lot of potential for further benefit for patients who may not get sufficient benefit with the existing medications. It's important to be aware that to this point, there isn't definitive data showing that these drugs reduce cardiovascular events. But one of the implications of the IMPROVE-IT trial is that it's reasonable to expect, because these drugs lower LDL cholesterol, that they probably will lower cardiovascular events. The definitive trials are ongoing, but right. one anticipates now, based on what IMPROVE-IT has shown, that those trials are likely to be positive. And it is plausible that the FDA advisory committee, in looking at the evidence they had before them, were favorably affected by the information from Improve It yes. to suggest to them this will probably be achieved with these drugs as well. Well, it's really terrific to have both the lead author and the editorialist of the Improve It trial here, both to give us insight on that trial, but more broadly on LDL cholesterol lowering. Hopefully this has been a useful discussion for our audience. It was really exciting to hear these new perspectives on lowering bad cholesterol. Of course, the foundation still remains a healthy diet and exercise, but for people, in particular those at high cardiovascular risk and particularly those with high cholesterol levels, these new classes of drugs that we just discussed, PCSK9 inhibitors and azetamide, which has actually been around for a while, may be further options. I'm Dr. Deepak Bhatt from the Harvard Heart Letter and Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. Thanks so much for joining in and listening to this discussion.